Welcome to Mondays with Mark. If you're watching on Facebook, please share our program so all your friends can watch along with you. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure and subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss a Mondays with Mark. Well, welcome everybody. And this week over at marklowry.com, you can get the Dogs Go to Heaven t-shirt, Life Gets Loud, and Be the Miracle CDs for $20. A $20 bill plus shipping. And that will encourage you, I hope. Hey, everybody. Hey. How are you? I hope you're doing good tonight. I hope you're still hunkering down if you're supposed to be. Uh, Colleen and I are fixing to go on a road trip, so that'll be fun. We'll tell you about that yeah. in a little bit. Won't that be fun? That will be. Because I'm ready to get out of my hunkering spirit. But it's America's, what is this, Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. My gosh, I started to say America's birthday, but that's not right. Uh -huh. Let's sing this together. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. And Majesty above the fruited plain. Sing with me. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. at us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. You know that? And to the Republic. How many years did you do that with your students every morning? 35 years every 30, day. Every day. I pledge to the, the American flag and then to the Texas flag. Really? Every day. So half the class is spent pledging? <laughs> yes. In the morning. That's the first thing that we did. Oh, what a wonderful day to see you all. Hello, Jenny Montgomery, Richard Moss. Uh, saw that leg, Brother Mark. What does that mean, Brother Moss? I don't know what saw that leg means. Ruth Lewis, Vancouver, love listening to the two of you. Well, there's three of us, Ruth. <laughs> Phillips, how you doing back there, Philip? I'm good, how are y'all? How's your family? Good. Everybody good. Good? All good? Your mama's good? Yeah, she's doing great, yeah. And you are total, not only just retired, but it's over. You've gone in there, cleaned out your desk. Yes, that's. I spent, I spent, it was supposed to be just two days last week, but they had to let me come a third day because they divided us up. You know, they let the first and the fourth grade teachers go in one, two days, and then the other, other, you know, teachers in, but they had, I mean, 35 years of things I had to get out of there. So they let me come in a third day. You, did you find things you'd forgotten? Oh yeah, there was so many. I was just standing there. There was just I was just seeing things. There's so many memories, but a lot of the you know a lot of things I just trashed. I mean, <laughs> really, it was stuff in the filing cabinet that I really haven't even used. It was just there. Yeah. So I had to throw all of that away. Well, you but had to do your kid stuff too, right? I had, had to, to do that. Out. Was the first day I had to clear their desk and their cubbies out. Everything you we had did. to go through and clean their desk. Did you do it with gloves on? Well, yeah, and of course yeah. by now the virus would be dead well, if it had yeah, been in there. Nobody's been in. No in children have been in there since March the what ninth or so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that it was a lot of work. And my mother said, she said, "Were you sad? You know, were you sad?" And I said, "I I tried to be. 
I wanted, you know, I was, I, I was going to be sad. I was, I was standing there in my room after it was all cleared out. And I just looked at it. I think I've been in here. I've been in this particular room for about 18 years. Wow. That one room. And I said, well, you know, it's done. And I, But you I, know I what? Whenever, good. now that you're out, mm-hmm. now that you don't have to worry about you talking about your students and them hearing you, you're going to have to come up with some good stories. Oh, I'm sure. So when we get back together, you can talk badly about all of them. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should hear some of the stories. Some of the kids aren't real sweet. No, no well. they're not. But, but they're you young. Know, you know, they probably learned some lessons now being, being with this pandemic that we've had and yeah. had to stay home. You I bet know? they're ready to come back I, to school. I know they are. These children, I'm sure, are ready to get back and with their classmates. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know parents are ready, too. So Well, yeah. thank you guys for mm-hmm. praying for Dina Davidson, my friend. She's back in the back house. She has uh, had knee replacement. Mm-hmm. And uh, she had it a week ago today. It was Monday. Oh, it was. Yeah, and then she was in the hospital Gosh, for five days, yeah, remember? Yeah, And, uh, oh, y'all, it's. I'm sure this is a painful day. She's got a fever of some sort, too. Mm. I hope that's not COVID. But nobody's no. been around her to give her COVID. No. I, you know, it's just she's had good days. You know, she's done really well with it, yeah. and uh, she just didn't feel too good today, she said. So... She and I know she, how you all, please pray for her. And I know how you all want to know what we're going to eat when this is over. Because you know we have to eat. <laughs> Colleen has made her famous gumbo and potato salad. Yeah. Now, we showed you the recipe for the potato salad. At some point, mm-hmm. we got to do the gumbo. The gumbo video didn't come out real good. Well, we'll, we'll do it again. We'll make it again, yeah. But her gumbo is good. And let's see what else we can tell you. Oh, let's sing together. Let's sing praise him. Is that the key? Pray, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in the morning, praise Him in the noontime, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him when the sun goes down. Everybody love Him, love Him, love Him, love Him in the morning. Love him in the noontime, love him, love him, love him when the sun goes down. Let's praise him, everybody praise him, praise him, praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime, praise him, praise him. Praise Him when the sun goes down. Oh, let's love Him, love Him. Love Him in the morning, love Him in the noontime. Love Him, love Him. Love Him when the sun goes down. And I saw Sandy Crowder Eccles say hello, Philip. What's hey, uh, that's Sandy. our friend too, yeah, Sandy? Don't Sandy. you want to say hello to me and Colleen? <laughs> hello, Philip. <laughs> hello, Sandy. Jaron says hi. Hey, Jaron hey. Davis. Good to see you, buddy. Oh, it's so good to see everybody. All of you over at YouTube. Hello, Hannah, and hello, Denise Templeton. Uh, listen, if you're watching on YouTube, please uh, subscribe. And if you're watching on Facebook, share it, share it, share it. We come here, we got watching 1,447 of you right now. Thank you. Hey, let's do this one we haven't done in a while. Oh, this is a, is that it? Yeah. That's a good one. Remember the, the when we did this last time? <laughs> we got so tickled with ourselves. Because we go, uh, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, for the half has never yet been told. And I had a migraine today, but it is joy. <laughs> Talk about how, all our, how bad we all are. But you know what? It is joy unspeakable when you let it be. If you don't think about it much, you can get kind of bitter. I've done that myself. I've been angry lately, haven't I, Colleen? You have. I have. 
But, you know, we're all human. But it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. All oh, the hat has never yet been All right, let's sing softer and don't play and let's see if we can hear Philip. Well, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of glory, full of glory, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. Sing that second verse, Philip. I have that one. I have found. Go ahead. No, you do it. I have found the pleasure. joy unspeakable and full of glory full of glory full of glory it is joy unspeakable and full of glory oh the half has never yet been told you're right someone said that mic is good i know i heard about this mic from the from the Isaacs, and so I called him and said, I want a mic like that, but theirs has some kind of fancy thing around it, but it's made by the same company, it's called Ear Trumpet, and these are handmade by a man in Portland, Oregon, Ear Trumpet, if you want to look it up. Well, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory, it is joy unspeakable and full of Glory, all the hat has never yet been told. Oh, we have step. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. And it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory for the hat has never yet been told. Oh my goodness gracious. Billy Blackwood's going to be my special guest tonight. I interviewed him the other day and I had the best time. Billy Blackwood of the Blackwood Brothers, I've known him since I was 11. And I didn't know him real well because he's a few years older than me. But I remember when he played the drums for the Blackwood Brothers. And it's so interesting to know the Blackwood Brothers, the group is 86 years old. Wow. Now, none of the original members are in it, but but Billy, <laughs> Billy is running it now, and it's just a lot of fun. We'll be talking to him in a minute. And let's talk about, what could we talk about? Let's, oh, I gotta, let me tell you why we're going on a road trip. I've asked Colleen to help me drive because I don't want to fly yet. Uh, I don't know why. And, and I want to go on a road trip, mm -hmm. so. I'm driving from Houston to Nashville and then spend a few days there. And then um, we're driving on to Pigeon Forge where we will be with Phil Waldrop and his group. It's an incredible thing. He usually has 10,000 people at this event, wow. but he has narrowed it down. Same room that would hold 10,000, but he's only allowing 1,200 in so they can be spaced apart. Wow. So it's, you know, it's a new day, y'all. It is a new day. Hey, before we get going too much further, I want to uh, tell you, I want to play you a little something about season three of Dinner Conversations. Uh, our sponsor is Child Fund, and I love these organizations that help kids get educated and learn and, and, and gives them food, because you know how much I love food. And let me play this for you. I have sponsored children for as long as I can remember, and I love doing it. I've never had a child, and it's the best way for a single person to have a child. You know, sponsor them. You're not really responsible, but you help. You know, and I like that. I've got five right now I'm sponsoring with Child Fun, and I couldn't be happier. I love these kids, and I'm glad I can help, but I'm glad they're not really mine. 
So go to childfund.org forward slash dinner conversations and sponsor your child you don't have to really invest that much into. Can you imagine if you only had to spend $36 a month on the ones you birthed? This is a deal. Hi, I'm Mark Lauer. And I'm Andrew Greer. And you're watching Dinner Conversations. Turning the light on one question at a time. Season three. three. And who are you guys again? He's the millennial. The old I'm millennial. the old guy. I'm an old millennial. This feels very religious. <laughs> just, just stay with the <laughs> And our guests this season are best-selling author and teacher Lisa Harper. Country music legend, Winona Judd. Thanks for shopping. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and our Grammy-winning friend, Jason Crabb. Women of faith, wise woman, Patsy Claremont. Musical married duo, Jackie Velasquez and Nick Gonzalez. This episode's <laughs> gonna cost therapy <laughs> for you. Major therapy. The Gaither vocal bands, Wes Hampton, and his father-in-law and counselor, Mark Means. Enneagram author and podcast host Ian Morgan Cron and TV star Lisa Welchel. New York Times bestseller and radio personality Eric Metaxas. Uh, We're rolling? Yeah. <laughs> Gold selling country artist Julie Roberts. Statler Brothers Jimmy Fortune. Sibling singers Linda Randall and newsboys Michael Tate. I've mm. always thought he was Peter Pan. Dude. I'm about to backhand <laughs> Bam, bam, bam. Yes, there is the stupid <laughs> So join us for a brand new season of Dinner Conversations. Turning the light on one question at a time. Season three. Half the people at this table are on medication. Half? This half. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can binge watch Dinner Conversations right now. You can binge watch it on Amazon Prime. The entire season. I think all three seasons are up there, but you can definitely watch season three. And I'm so glad you tuned in with us tonight. In fact, someone, Jim Renee Dillard Biggerstaff, well, don't you have a name? He requested this. Sing, let's sing it. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Mm -hmm. I love those songs. Sunday school songs. Sunday school. That's your back Sunday school. Do you miss Sunday school? Yeah. yeah. When you were a little kid. Well, that was did. fun. I'd get my quarter from my daddy <laughs> for to put in the offering plate, and he'd say, you're going to give this to God. And I remember sitting there looking at that quarter thinking, God is in the back counting the money, uh -huh. and he's going to touch this quarter. I had no idea he was up in heaven. Uh, they ahead. said, he said, give it to God. So I thought I was going to, hello, Rosemary Hots. How are you? My grand, Marilyn, your grandson loves this one. Is he with you? Well, let's sing it. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide. Deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Well, I guess we'll play old Billy, Billy Blackwood. I love old Billy. He's a good one. Here's the interview I did the other day with the owner of the Blackwood Brothers, and uh, hopefully when we go to Nashville. I'm coming to Nashville next week, Billy, if you're watching. Let's do lunch. Uh, I leave Friday. We're leaving Friday, and we'll get there probably Saturday or Sunday sometime. I love a road trip. Here's Billy Blackwood, everybody. Okay. Hey, Billy. How are you today? Hey, Mark. I'm doing great, buddy. Good to hear from you. Man, it's good to see you. It's been a long time. I remember when I was about 11, you were on the drums for the Blackwood Brothers. That's when I first saw the young Billy Blackwood. And you were with, now you're still, you've got the Blackwood Brothers going again, or, or have they just... Yeah. Just kind of taking the baton from Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy had it for a number of years, and then uh, about ten years ago, I joined him. And then the, the rascal, about three years after that, he retired, so he left me with it. So how's he doing? He's doing well. Good. He's doing well. I talk to him all the time. He's in Memphis. I'm outside of Nashville, so we don't see each other that much. But I talk to him a lot. 
Now he was in the original. Was he in the original Blackwood? Not the original. Well, I know my dad was. Yeah, your dad yes. was, and uh, you had this uncle who they they all died in a plane crash. Not your dad, but well, actually, actually, two of the guys, um, R.W. Blackwood, my dad's nephew, sang baritone with with the original group, and the bass singer Bill Lyles. They were killed in the plane crash in uh, 1954. Yeah. Long time ago. 1954. Yeah. Wow. I remember that uh, hearing about that, <clears throat> and and then I saw some old footage, uh, and that baritone singer was amazing. He was amazing. I mean, yeah, I, I didn't know R.W., but uh, you know, I've seen tons of footage. I've listened to a lot of recordings, and he had a fun, Mark. He had a phenomenal range. You know, we as singers, range is a big deal, right? And R.W. apparently had about a three and three or three and a half octave range. Just wow. Sky high and deep, rich baritone, everything in between. So he was, I, he was quite a phenomenal talent. When I heard the footage of him, I decided that that's got to be the best baritone singer to ever live. He's so smooth. Yeah, very, very smooth. What a you know, our, our, our dear friend, Bill Gaither, uh, has said that that group of the Blackwood Brothers with my dad and R.W. and Bill Shaw and tenor, Bill Lyles on bass, he said it was the best quartet that ever was. Wow! And he's, you know, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Got a pretty good ear. <laughs> yeah, and he's <laughs> also very critical. He, I mean, he of the music. So right, right. He's, uh, and good, I mean that in a good way. He's not critical, yeah, bad, exactly. but he's boy. He loves. He loves a good quartet. Like no one I've ever known. I've never known anyone yeah. who loves number one the music as much as he does. Except maybe yeah. my mother. My mother was right up there with him. And really? she loves, she loved gospel music. And, uh, of course, she passed away in 2014. But um, I've never known anyone like her or Bill Gaither. They were, they just absolutely loved. Now, I love this. I love talking about Jesus. I love Jesus. And I love communicating, whether it be speaking or singing. But I'm not in love with the music like that. I wish I was. Mm -hmm. Where it just consumes. I mean, I'm telling you. If you're in a restaurant with Bill Gaither and Muzak is on, a naked woman could walk in front of him and he wouldn't <laughs> see her because he's listening to the music. It, yeah. it literally calls to him like no one I've ever seen. Was your dad mm -hmm. like that? Absolutely. And, you know, those guys, too, back in the day, and I've, I've read a lot and, and studied a lot about that generation. And, you know, I mean, music is a part of all of our lives, and every generation has their groups. You know, Pat Boone came along, Elvis came along, Beatles came along, you know, who else? Everybody's come. But um, that generation had an appreciation for musicianship and and real singing. They knew what real sing you know, I, I mean, I'm not not to go off on a tangent here, but a lot of what a lot of what is put out there today, uh, I mean, I think mainly in the secular world, and no, you know, I'm not trying to just take jabs, but mainly in the secular world, it seems to be a lot of auto tune things. Like I heard one of the great, most most famous, uh, top selling singers of the last few years on a show a couple of years ago. And she she didn't have auto tune. She was horrible. Yeah. Uh, you know, back in the day, those those cats, man, they sang it all the way through. And if they didn't get it right, they re-sang it. You know, they, there was no there was no punching in or over. And a lot of them were it. doing it around one microphone too. Right. Right. Well, I kind of like that idea because you can blend yourself. I don't yeah. like depending on the sound man to blend the group. I want the group to blend itself. And you can't do yeah. that with ear monitors. I hate ear monitors. Right. I, I do too. We don't use them. We're kind of, we're one of the last holdouts, I guess, not using ear monitors, but we, we do sing on individual mics, the current Blackwood Brothers, Yeah. but we have one monitor mix. Right. So we're basically doing the same thing as they did with one mic. We are... We're mixing ourselves, you know, physically moving in and out, whatever, adjusting by what we hear from that one single monitor. So it's kind of the same effect. But, yeah, the one mic deal, I mean, I watch old video. I'm sure you've seen it. And, and of course, I've watched a lot of the Blacker Brothers. But, you know, around one mic and those guys and the bass singer would lean in for the low note. Yes. Like, it's just cool. It was it's so cool. cool. So yeah. the Blackwood Brothers are have been around. I mean, the name, of course, different people because they've died off. But. Yeah. Around 70 years, probably. 
86 years this year. 86 years. 86. They start, my dad uh, was the youngest of three brothers. Roy and Doyle were his older brothers, and R.W. was his nephew. And the four of them started in 1934. So this uh, 2020 is 86 years. Two years after my dad was born. I mean, that <laughs> yeah. just so blows my mind. Oh, yeah. man, I would love so to. So 80, 86 years, and, you know, uh, Blackwood always at the ham. Um you know, my dad led the group for, gosh, probably 40, 50 years, and then my cousin Cecil for a long time, then my brother Jimmy for a long time, and now me. So it's kind of, you know, and, kind of and, been a family business. And you, then you they ever, were you, on, the Blackwood Brothers were on some TV show back in the 50s, was it? Or somewhere back yes. there? Yes, yes. Uh, in fact, two weeks before the plane, this is, a, this is a phenomenal story. Two weeks before the plane crash, there was a TV show, it was the most popular show on television at the time, on CBS, Arthur Godfrey's Talent right. Scouts. And it was kind of like American Idol or, you know, uh, one of those, uh, The Voice, one of those kinds of shows. And talent scouts would scout talent around the country and introduce them to Mr. Godfrey. And they would audition. Well, the Blacker Brothers were all, one of those groups that uh, a, a lady heard and she was a talent scout. And so she brought the group to New York to audition. Mr. Godfrey liked them. They went on the program. And uh, that was like the middle of June, 1954. And they won that night singing uh, a lively little song that was actually a, a hit song by a fellow Memphian who was a star back then. Her name was Kay Star. Kay she Star. recorded a song. Kay, yeah. I was in a I was in the I was in a play when I was ten years old with Kay Star called Are You Kidding no, Me? No, called Annie oh Get God. Your Gun. Annie Get oh, Your yeah. Gun. Yeah, I played Little Jake so and cool. she was Oh, what a singer she well, was. She, she was a singer, and she was from Memphis, yeah. and she had had a hit with this song called Have You Talked to the Man Upstairs. Oh, yes. Well, the Godfrey people told the Blackwoods, told my dad and the group, you know, we are a secular program. You can't do anything overtly Christian, but, you know, uh, find a song, get your message across, but it's also uh, going to pass uh, our, you know, whatever, regulations, right. our, our, our guidelines. So they did. So they, they picked that song, Have You Talked to the Man Upstairs. Because uh, it was a fresh hit by K-Star. So they did that song, won the whole contest that night. And, uh, you know, then they stayed. The winner of that show stayed in New York City. It was at, at uh, CBS Studios New York. Stayed in New York City the following week. I think the show was on a Monday. And then uh, every day thereafter for that week, the winner stayed in New York and sang on Mr. Godfrey's radio program every day. Because he, he had a simulcast radio and TV program. A lot of people don't know that term, but it's back in the day when a program was aired on TV and radio at the same time, that's called simulcast. Right. And so it was on, on radio nationwide and on television nationwide. And, um, so they stayed in New York and did that. They came home. Then two weeks later, uh, the plane crash happened and the bass singer, Bill Lyles and my cousin, RW were, were killed in it. So that was, you know, I mean, they went from being on top of the mountain to the whole thing crashing, you know, mm -hmm. literally, uh, within two weeks. So it was quite a tragic story. Interestingly, though, they reformed, which you, you're you another great friend of yours and guy like my second dad, J.D. Sumner, yeah. joined the Blackwood Brothers to replace Bill Lyles. Uh, R. Debbie's younger brother, Cecil, joined to replace him. And because they had half a new quartet, they went. They were allowed to go back to Godfrey two years later, and they won again. Oh, wow. With that new group. So kind of an interesting story. I hope they weren't flying planes two weeks later. No, 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 no. They, I don't think my dad ever even set foot in a, in a plane again, in a, in a private plane. In a private plane. Those... Yeah, they, they had their own private planes, and that's what crashed. Oh, really? So they, they traveled by private plane? They did. They kind of pioneered that. Uh, uh, not a lot. I don't know any other gospel. Well, I don't know other word. There were no other gospel groups at the time doing it. Glenn Miller had done it, uh, but unfortunately he crashed about, you know, like the mid, I mean, the early 40s, I think. Uh, in the English Channel, mm. but but I don't think anybody else had any, at least any gospel group was flying. But when they moved to Memphis in 1950, they realized they could fly to more, you know, fly a lot further than they could drive. So they bought a couple of planes, and um, and one of the one of those was the one that crashed. So they had their own private planes. And no, my dad, he never he never flew privately again, and I don't think he ever stepped foot on one. It was and and you I'm you may have heard this story, but. They were singing, the Blackwood Brothers and Statesmen were singing in Clanton, Alabama that day. And Bill and R.W. jumped in the plane to take a little practice run to make sure they could take off after dark and get the lay of the runway. And that's when the crash happened. It was daylight, and everybody was standing there watching it. Oh. And uh, and 
daddy ran to the plane, you know, I mean, it, it stalled and it went straight up, stalled, crashed to the ground, burst into flames. Daddy ran toward the plane. Somebody grabbed him from behind and held him to keep him from going in. And uh, that was Jake Hiss, who was you know, singing that day with the Statesman. Good so, night. That must have been, oh, I can't imagine. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine. You know, again, I didn't know our day. I wasn't there. I, I wasn't around. But still to this day, I know how deeply that event impacted my dad. Yeah. Just, you know, I mean, R.W. was his, was only two years younger than he was his nephew. R.W. was daddy's nephew, but he was only two years younger. So they were more like, he was more like a brother to R.W. Right. than his old Troy Doyle. And Bill Lyles was his best friend. So uh -huh. he watched his, he watched his, you know, younger brother, so to speak, his nephew, R.W., and Bill Law was killed right there on the spot. So horrific, you know, but, and he made a statement that day, the statesman put him in their car and drove him back to Memphis. And he made the statement, he was done. They were like 33, 34, 35 years old. Oh. You know, young men, young families, had just won Arthur Godfrey Talent Scouts, had the world by the tail, man, and it all literally came crashing down that day. So horrific time, but you know, God redeemed that, started, you know, told, impressed my dad, hey, James, you're not done, I'm not through with you, and Obviously, as they say, the rest is history. Yeah, really. I mean, oh, what something to get over. That's amazing. So now, how many dates are you doing with your new group? First of all, who's in the group? Well, uh, Wayne Little has been singing tenor with us for, gosh, 18, 20 years, long time. Butch Owens sings bass, has been for a number of years. Uh, our newest guy is Jonathan Mattingly. John's family, the Mattingly family, has traveled all over the U.S. singing 300 dates a year. So we, we don't work a lot. <laughs> for what he's used to. But he's the youngest in the, in the group. He's 26. Um, His but the family did 300 dates a year? 300 dates a year. That's all they did. They just traveled and sang all over the country. And lived out of a bus? Lived out of a motorhome. They actually had a home in Missouri, but they basically lived out of their motorhome, and you know they park somewhere and then work in the area for two or three weeks or whatever. Oh, so cool. John grew up singing all the time. So uh, you know we do about 125 dates a year, so that's kind of that's a life. That's a lot. To me, that's a lot. It is. It is a lot. We're we're actually kind of winding down a little bit, but that yeah, that's a lot. How has the Corona uh, vacation been for you? <laughs> <laughs> corona vacation. I haven't heard a term like that. That's a great way to. You know, Mark, I, I got to be honest. Um, God has blessed us that that it hasn't really impacted us that much financially. But the thing that I, I'm just real honest, when you ask me something, I'm just gonna tell you, I have loved being home with my wife. That's the. It, you know, traveling is exciting and we love being, we love being able to proclaim the gospel. Right. We love the impact that it has on people. You know, a lot of people just come to a concert for the, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I realize I'm talking to the choir here, but no. a lot of people just come for the entertainment, but they leave and their burden is lighter and their smile is brighter yeah. and their hearts have been touched and their lives have been changed. And some people come to Christ in our concerts. So, you know, there's a whole upside to what we do. That's great. But like everything else, there's a downside. The downside is being gone from home. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my wife uh, keeps the home fires burning. We have a bunch of kids, and How many? all of them are, are pretty much grown. But we have grandkids. How many I kids just, did you have? We had nine between us. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And how many grandkids? Uh, we have four at this point and two more on the way. Oh, wow. So, uh, you know, I, I really love being home. Uh, I, I just I love being with my wife. Yeah. I love you know, working in the yard, just doing home stuff. And, uh, you know, I mean, can't make a living. <laughs> no. doing that. But again, God's blessed us to where this hasn't really impacted us uh, that much financially, but it has really been a blessing just to be home. So I, that's been my Corona vacation. Yeah. You know, if you go back to school, uh, when, when we were kids, you know, we had the summer off and right. one of the first, one of the first things that happened when you went back to school was, okay, tell me what you did on your summer vacation. Right. So maybe that should be a, a topic. What did you do on your Corona vacation? On your corona <laughs> vacation. Well, you know what? I, most, uh, so many people like Bill and Gloria and others that, that, uh, <clears throat> you know, like you were not devastated by this. Uh, cause some of these little groups, they live from week to week and this has been a right. devastating thing. But for those of us who are okay, it's been, you know, Bill and Gloria have loved being together. I mean, they're mm -hmm. actually getting along, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> And I just hear from so many couples that are saying, you know, this has been good for us. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. He called me the other day, by the way. He's so sweet. I mean, I know you know that. Of but course. He called and just said, hey, Billy, I'm just calling to check, make sure you guys are okay. I mean, he, he's, wow. Yeah. He's just been such a great friend. Isn't that something? Like, what could, yeah. he, what could he do if they weren't okay? You know, well, <laughs> but isn't that sweet for him to call? Yeah, yeah. I do too. I, mean, I call, you know, call. I try to keep up with people and say, you know, how's it, how's it going for you? So all of your kids, all of your family, you don't know anyone with the COVID yet or no. have you? Oh, good, good, no, good. I don't know anybody. Yeah. Well, I, uh, was tested cause a friend of mine, her, she got a false test that she was positive and she wasn't, she got another oh, test and they've proven that she wasn't, but I was hanging around her. And so I thought oh, I better gosh. go get tested too, but yeah. I pretty much hunkered down. You know, I don't mind really? being at home. I love my home. I love, mm -hmm. you know, just with, and I've got some friends around me, like, you know, so I'm not really alone. I don't like being mm -hmm. alone, alone, but I like being, yeah. you know, so anyway, yeah. I wanted to know what are your goals? Have you got a new record? What's going on with the group? Well, we have a new single out that's written by Diane Wilkinson. You know, Diane's yeah. written so many great songs. It's called A New Look, and uh, it's doing well in the charts. And I'm actually going into the studio um, in about two weeks to uh, cut the tracks on a new song that I've written called Righteousness Exalts a Nation. Say that and, again. Uh, Life. Righteousness Exalts a Nation okay. from uh, – you know, from Proverbs. Sure. And so that's a, that's a new song. I actually wrote it a couple of years ago. I wish I'd have put it out then because it had really been timely, but I think we're still going to get it in time for, you know, just to kind of address where we are as a nation. Right. Um, the lyrics are just really the verse. The first verse is straight from second Chronicles seven fourteen. Uh, if my people who are called by my name, that, that passage. And then the chorus is righteousness exalts a nation. So that's, I'm actually going in in two weeks to cut the tracks on that. And then we'll put the vocals on and hopefully get it out this summer. Good. So that, that's kind of the, the newest thing on the horizon for us. And, you know, we've been off. We will have been off about four months. And uh, so I, I oh. hope we'll still recognize each other when we get back on the bus. But we're, <laughs> we're, we're supposed to head out July 4th, uh, it, you know, Lord willing. So Lord we'll, willing. we'll see if all that's – and then we're, we're doing a, um, a two-week tour to Pacific Northwest in British Columbia uh, in August. And uh, – mm. You know, just doing the thing. And just go to blackwoodbrothers.com and you can find the schedule. Yeah, yeah. How are things with you? How are you doing? Well, I'm doing fine. I'm just bored. So every day I go live <laughs> almost just because I'm bored. I go talk to my people and they're bored too because everybody's at home. Yeah. So for, yeah. for a while there, I was going live every day, but now I'm just going live Monday night, which you'll be on the, uh, Monday nights and then uh, Wednesday mornings and Friday mornings. So I'm okay. we weaning them down from seven days a week to three, but I hope what they've enjoyed it. What a cool idea, it. though. Huh? What a cool idea. Yeah, I just really like checking it because you know so many of our followers are older. Mm -hmm. You know that, sure. and um, and some <laughs> that's of my people, man. <laughs> that's my people. I love, and it's my favorite group of people, actually. Oh yeah. I mean, I, you know, I they don't have to, anything to prove. They just they're real. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I, you just, I love it. And I don't have to learn their lingo. I know their lingo. Yeah. You know, when you go do a youth meeting, you got to find out what what words they understand because they have a whole well, different that's language. A, that's a what? What does that mean? <laughs> I don't have time for young people anymore, but I do love the old ones. And yeah. uh, according to Facebook, my followers are the bulk of them are sixty five and up, and I know that's a lot of them. A lot of them are going through this thing alone. Yeah. And I, my heart hurts for them because I yeah. I can't imagine going through this alone. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that that would that would be difficult. That would be. I've called. I'm I'm like you. I've called, uh, you know, a lot of people through the last couple of months. Just hey, just checking on you. And a lot of them are, you know, fans and friends of ours that are that are older. And and so far, everybody's just been great. Just you know, hey, just living life. And you know, doing fun. <clears throat> when you think of it, when you think of it, you know, we were asked by our government just to sit down. We weren't asked mm -hmm. to go to Normandy. We were at, uh oh, sorry about that. I do not know how that happened. You know, it's when we we weren't asked to go to the beaches of Normandy and give our lives. Right. All we were asked to do is sit down for a couple of months and stay away right. from people. Well, yeah. a lot of people enjoy that. <laughs> I like yeah. the sit down part, but I don't. Yeah. I miss hugging people. I'm a hugger. Yeah, and I miss that. Yeah, I do too. What do you miss? Not, that I miss that. I miss the interaction with with people. You know. Mark, I, I'm in a, I'm in 
I'm reaping where I haven't sown, you know, that, that phrase from the right. Bible. Because of the longevity of the Blackwood Brothers right. and because so many people love my dad, right. they love me, by, you know, because he was my dad. And Hold on, I'm, let me shut this door. Shh, I'm recording. Oh, okay, I'm back. Okay. You know, a lot of people just love me because of they love my dad. Right. And I'm getting to benefit from their love and respect for him. Uh, and again, reaping where I haven't sown. And so I'm afforded uh, relationships with people. And I've often thought about this. You know, I, I grew up with, I mean, my dad's best friends were J.D. and Jake and Hovey. Uh, and, you know, right under that were Glenn and George and Howard and Best. I mean, yeah. I grew up with so many people that I had relationship with because of my dad. Right. Well, the same is true in a wider circle. There are so many people that come to our concerts who, you know, they're, they're, they're aged and they'll come up, you know, to the table, to the product table, and they'll say, you know, my our first date was to a Black Brothers concert in 1947. You know, I mean, I get, I get that all the time. And so I've been afforded an opportunity to... Uh, not only carry on the tradition of the Blackwood Brothers, but to feel the blessing of people who have heard our group and been fans and friends through the decades. And so I, I, that's what I miss. I miss that interaction with them because it's, uh, yeah. you know, that our music was their music. It was contemporary Christian music. Right. They were, it, at the time, it they, sure was. At, at the time, it was. And so they associate that with us, and we still do. He touched me in the old country church, and you know we've our you probably seventy five percent of our program are older songs. We do one of our latest projects is an a cappella hymns project that I, I uh, arranged and produced, and people love it. Yeah. And the, the the project before that was all old classics like Without Him and He Touched oh. Me and What a Day That Will Be, and for our audience, they love those songs, Absolutely. and they come to our concerts. Just not having and nothing against new songs. I love new songs. Our new single is called A New Loop. Right. And it's a relatively new song. I, I don't have anything against that. But for our generation, for our clientele, they want to hear the old classics. Yes, they, they want do. to hear the hymns. And because they're and, not going to uh, hear them at church. Yeah. Really? They're not going to hear the hymns at church anymore. And that's right. pitiful. But now that's right. why I'm every day I come on, I sing, I I got this, you know. Hymns. This is uh, "Then Sings My Soul" by Robert J. Morgan, and it's got right. all the old hymns and the stories. Do you have this book? I do. I have that. Book. Isn't it I the best? That. It is great. And then I've got my Baptist hymnal right here, and I've got my Church of God hymnal right here, and we just—I just open it up. You can open this book and land anywhere, and oh well, except there, and know what song it is. Mansions in Heaven. Have you ever heard that one? I don't know. I haven't either. I have. So I guess I that so. doesn't always work. But usually <laughs> you can just like open your, anywhere you look in here. When the roll is called up yonder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gosh. I mean, it just, it's, it's like you get to hear from your childhood. Right. When you hear those songs, songs that right. touched you, songs that changed you. Right. And, but you got we got to remember, we old folks got to remember that these new songs are the hymns of the future for these children. That's right. And That's so right. when you're standing in church, like, because they make you stand now forever, and, and you're seeing yeah. all those pitifully written songs up there, just look at the young people. They're getting it. It doesn't matter if we get it. We got yeah. it. We've already got yeah. it. They're getting right. it. And I say, you know, watch them and you will be blessed. Yeah, I'm kind of an odd duck, Mark. I like it all. You do? I, I really do. I mean... I don't know that there's been a greater, like you look at, at uh, Keith Getty's song in Christ Alone. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That, that's a hymn if ever I heard one. Um, you know, there's a recent, a relatively recent song, uh, What a Wonderful Name It Is. Uh, oh yeah, what a that is, is a good one. And that's a great song. It's a, uh, a hill what song. What a wonderful uh, name oh, it yeah. is. Have you heard Lauren Talley sing that? Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh my gosh. Order that, buddy. Go go YouTube that if you can. Oh, man, she sings the fire out of that. Right. I know a lot of people do. It's a great song. It is a great but Lauren, song. But Lauren has it on a CD uh, called Glorious, I think. But it's a it's it's coupled with Michael W. Smith's Agnes Day song. 
And uh, oh my goodness, I'm raptured every time I hear that. Really? Little plug for Warren. Yeah, uh, I would love to. I'll have to look that up. Well, buddy, I am so thrilled that you're still going. Now you're 67, but you look 27 because you've always oh, been. Yeah. Now, are you singing in the group or just playing drums? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I sing baritone. Oh good, you got the good part. I got the good part. I love it because I, I mean, I, you know, I grew up doing four four part and playing piano and guitar and all that. So I love I love the whole musicality of it. It is, and I love the baritone part because it is the color part. It it's the is. Part that to jump and put all the pretty notes in. It yeah. freaked me out when I joined the vocal band and had to learn that because <laughs> it doesn't follow. You know, the tenor follows like a third above the lead usually, right. and the baritone, the baritone just fills in the holes. You're, yeah. you're always filling in holes, but man, when you learn it, it is so much fun. Oh, it, it's so pretty. Do you know that, you know, the, uh, you probably heard some of this, but the Elvis connection with us, we all grew up, oh, yeah. he grew up in the same church with the Blacker Brothers. Right. And he, he auditioned for a group that Elvis Jimmy Hamill, Presley auditioned Elvis for the Presley. Blackwood Brothers? No, 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 not for the Blackwood Brothers, but Jim Hamill, you remember with the oh, Rebels yeah. for years? Yeah. Jim Hamill was our pastor's son. Okay. And Jim Hamill and my cousin Cecil had a group called the Songfellows. And Elvis auditioned for it, and Jim Hamill told him he couldn't join the group because he couldn't hear harmony. Could he not? He didn't hear the he he didn't hear the harmony. All he sang was melody. Oh. Elvis did, so he he, <laughs> he got turned down for the song fellas because isn't he couldn't that sing funny? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> if you great? can't hear the harmony, it's hard to be in a quartet. It really is. It's kind of difficult when all you yeah. <laughs> all you sing is melody. And you know, <laughs> there's some young people. I, I, there's a popular singer that I, I was I ran up to him and said hey let's do how and had my phone there so let's do how great thou art and he couldn't do the harmony oh, wow. and I'm thinking wow and this was a superstar yeah. person well anyway I love you and I, when I come to Nashville we need to go to a meet and three and have a let's good conversation let's do it are you in Hendersonville or I well I'm in Gallatin just outside okay. of Hendersonville yeah all right well, so please come I, my treat you I got your number treat. now <laughs> okay buddy <laughs> Mark, so great to talk with you and visit with you. Thank you for this. This has been a gift. Oh, man. I, I want everybody to go to blackwoodbrothers.com and order that new single when it comes out. That'd be great. I love you, man. Take care. Love you too, buddy. Good to hear from you. Oh, wasn't that fun? We've been reading your comments while you while he was talking. I mean, what was fun, but what a, a sad story. No, that That was. plane crash about tore me up. I can imagine watching my brother killed in a plane crash. Well, Maribeth Larson said, let's sing, oh, with soulful reverence to God. That's not right. I click Mary Beth and it goes to Lucy Ross. Sometimes it doesn't click the right thing. I love you, Lucy, but I don't know that song. When, <coughs> okay, hold on. I had a booger fall in my throat. Oh. <laughs> when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. So let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Sing, when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. That's a good one. Thank you for that, Maribeth Larson. And Lucy Ross, I would have sung yours had I known it, but I don't know with soulful reverence to God. That sounds Presbyterian. <laughs> I don't really know that. I'm sad that you aren't still coming on every morning. Hey, listen, Karen, I'll be coming on some mornings. Where'd that go? Hey, uh, uh, Amy Ham, where'd she go? 
over there on Periscope, Karen Murphy, said, well, I'll come, I'll check on, I just don't want to wear out my welcome. And listen, Mondays with Mark is going on hiatus for the summer because I'm going back to work. And uh, But this weekend, this Friday, Colleen and I'll be heading out on a road trip and we'll try to keep y'all informed on what we're doing and if we can find anything to eat on the way. You know, we don't know what's going to be open. We got. We better find out I for know. like um, hotels, which ones? Because we want to stay in ones that are, you know, sanitized. Well, I saw the Hiltons. Yeah, the Hiltons. I, I saw That's that what on I heard. the news. That how they were. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. All right, y'all. Well, I will see you when I see you. God bless you. Bye bye. Thank you for tuning in to Mondays with Mark. We'll see you next Monday night, 7 p.m. Central, right here, wherever you saw our program. YouTube, be sure and like us and ring the bell. Facebook, please share our program. And we will see you next Monday night, 7 p.m. Central, for another Mondays with Mark.